Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help you prepare for a bright future in the space industry. Thank you for your support on Patreon, and don't forget that we have Academy-themed gear in the Academy Store. Sometimes a space company will produce a really great video, explaining their technology and goals. Sierra Nevada just recently did that with an incredible video, describing the technology that will be used on the Dream Chaser spacecraft. Dream Chaser is supposed to launch on a Vulcan rocket. We covered the Vulcan rocket system in this video, and Vulcan will fly with two Blue Origin BE-4 engines, covered in several videos. Flight-ready versions of these engines have been delivered, and I think it is very likely the first flight of this system will be a success, though I have doubts about reusability of the BE-4, which we explain in this lesson. For today's lesson, I'm going to play excerpts from the Sierra Nevada video and pause to clarify important points. At its core, rocket engines are quite literally the driving force behind space exploration. They're the one source of transportation that we have that is so energy dense that you can pack enough oomph into it to get into space. We have rocket engines that are designed and developed and built in the United States. With those engines, we're gonna be the leader to move forward and move farther into space. Sierra Nevada had originally planned to use a hybrid rocket engine for main propulsion. They had built the engine for the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2. This propulsion system is covered in this lesson. But to summarize, Sierra Nevada used hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene for a solid rocket fuel and nitrous oxide for an oxidizer. But after seeing the performance of the engine, which is fine for a suborbital space plane, but not very efficient for true space flight, they decided to go with a different technology and purchased a company called Orbitech. Orbitech had developed a patented liquid bipropellant vortex engine design. A vortex engine spins the propellants in the combustion chamber, which keeps the cooler gases toward the outside, near the chamber wall, and the hotter on the inside, allowing better performance. The Orbitech vortex engine uses propane and nitrous oxide propellants. They use the vortex propulsion system. It takes the hot gases and instead of just directly expelling it out the back of the thruster, it causes it to spin. And when you spin those gases, you can concentrate the hottest part of that reaction right down the middle, so you can actually use the burning gases to keep the thruster itself from melting. All spaceships also need a reaction control system. This is an array of small rocket engines that allow the ship to change its orientation in space. These engines are often hypergolic, perhaps using monomethyl hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide like the Dragon capsule and the X-37B. The problem is that these chemicals are extremely toxic, requiring special handling. The Dream Chaser's main propulsion system is non-toxic, and Sierra Nevada plans to follow that with their RCS thrusters. This will use hydrogen peroxide over a catalyst. The catalyst turns the hydrogen peroxide into superheated steam and oxygen. The power of these engines can then be boosted by adding RP-1 if necessary to the superheated propellant flow. Using non-toxic chemicals will allow immediate access to a landed ship and improve crew safety. Using the Vortex technology for cooling, Sierra Space has been able to develop a revolutionary three-phase RCS thruster. Advancing technology, not just for Dream Chaser, but propulsion for a wide range of other applications. The thruster itself is a three-mode thruster. It can fire in low, medium, and high thrust modes. The low and medium thrust are monopropellant, high test peroxide. We can get 40 pounds for low, 60 pounds for medium thrust. For high thrust, we, we do an injection of RP-1, and that gets us up to about 110 pounds of thrust. We're well above the 90% efficiency range for overall combustion efficiency. We can use fairly small mass flow rates to get the thrust levels that we're at. 110 pounds doesn't sound like much, but on a 14 pound thruster that's completely pressure fed, that's pretty great. It's probably the most advanced RCS thruster that's ever been developed. These systems are a huge achievement. We're building something here that uh, has never been developed before. We're doing everything we can to make sure that uh, we put a vehicle in orbit that one day will revolutionize uh, low Earth orbit. At Sierra Space, Proof of concept comes as every application goes through rigorous testing to qualify for the harshness of atmospheric change, unforgiving burn, and re-entry temperatures. 
and the vacuum of space. Each piece gets tested and refined and tested again and again. We have the bimetallic flange, uh, so one metal here, the nozzle is a completely different metal. We're having a hard time figuring out uh, how to seal between those two metals. The first thing we're going to do for this test today is make a new gasket that's going to seal uh, between the catalyst bed and the actual thruster core itself. We'll button up the bell jar, set all pressures and regulators, and then head out low peroxide and get going. So this is the test cell that we test the uh, Dream Chaser RCS thrusters in. The ability to test the thruster in space-like conditions is a real challenge, actually being able to maintain vacuum and heat at the same time. So we had to find a way to cool the hot gas so it didn't interfere with the structural capability of the vacuum chamber itself. A lot of these parts would melt and burn through in about 10 seconds or less. So we had to water jacket and spray in water into the vacuum system, which was upwards of 2,000 degrees. We'll send all that data down to the design team, and they'll pick the final design for the engine that's going to go on Dream Chaser. Finally, the Dream Chaser will have a thermal protection system that uses silica-based tiles. These use a new composite material called toughened, unipiece, fibrous, reusable, oxidation-resistant ceramic, or Tough Rock. This material was developed by NASA and can be licensed for commercial use. It can resist temperatures up to 1,650 Celsius, the usual orbital reentry temperature, while space shuttle tiles were fixed with epoxy. The Tough Rock tiles have a surface cap and an insulator base, integrated together and fastened with pins, also made from the insulator material. This design allows for heat expansion and easy replacement. The cap uses a high-efficiency tantalum-based ceramic composite called HETC. Tantalum is also not a common metal. Like niobium, it is a refractory metal, again meaning it can survive high temperatures while maintaining its strength. It is also chemically inert, and will not burn easily in a hot oxygen environment. Me, Sierra Space is leading the charge into the orbital age. We are pushing the edge of technology. All the effort that we put in here, all the time and blood, sweat, and tears that we're pouring into this really makes it worth it. After years of research and meticulous testing, the RCS thrusters are approved to go through production and get installed on Tenacity. Knowing that the hardware that I'm helping build and test will be going into space is so incredible and so rewarding. The Badger team hands off final designs, knowing their work is destined for space, playing a pivotal role in guiding Dream Chaser's journey to the International Space Station and beyond. It is just amazing to work on a vehicle like this because we're doing something that's never been tried before. We're truly reaching into the future, and it means a lot to the pages of history as far as the space frontier. What we're doing here is going to change the commercial landscape in spaceflight. There's no one else doing what we're doing. The Sierra Space Platform, it's comprehensive. It's not just a small piece of what's needed for spaceflight. It's the whole thing. It's how you get there. It's how you stay there. It's how you come back. And it is going to pave the way for how Earth interacts with space. And that's something no one else is, is doing. There's many pieces of the puzzle out there, but Sierra Space has the entire puzzle. So it's really awesome to be able to make that kind of an impact, not just on Sierra Space, but the world. The Sierra Nevada Corporation is headquartered out of Sparks, Nevada, but its test facility is in Wisconsin. This is where research and development of the propulsion and RCS systems is accomplished. On the frontier of a natural preserve in Wisconsin, the Sierra Space team embarks on a mission at the Badger Propulsion Test Facility, building and testing their own rocket engines. We have 28 acres as our operational area. We have four test cells and five test stands, and that's what we use for our propulsion testing here. This is the fuel bay of test cell three. These are hydrogen run tanks. They are 750 gallons each. They're vacuum jacketed. We can pressurize the system up to 6,000 PSI, and that's what we use to push hydrogen into the engine. The biggest engine we're testing is 35,000 pounds, and we can go up to 150,000 pounds on this test stand. Dream Chaser uses a specialized reaction control system to maneuver once in orbit. Known as RCS thrusters, the Dream Chaser will have 26 installed throughout its hull to help guide America's space plane into the orbital age. We want to thank the Sierra Nevada Corporation for giving us this look behind the scenes. It is always helpful when companies in the aerospace industry 
give us access to the amazing science and technology that they are using to make the next generation of spacecraft. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay safe at Astro Proterra.